Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you two supply and demand trades in detail so that way you can do it yourself after you're done watching this video. And I actually share the trade live because I have it recorded where you can hear my thoughts while I'm actually in the trade itself. So not only do you get to see me analyze it now after the fact and show you the trade and how it went panned out, but you get to see what happened, what I was thinking during the trade as well. So I hope you enjoy this. If you do, hit that like and subscribe and make sure to check our Discord channel, link below. Let's get started. So let's go over the first trade, which is ADN. And this one was a loser. Come on, Benny, man. The kid is a L7 winning. Now I want to explain what I was thinking. And I also want to explain what I learned from this trade. First off, before I take any trade, I always look at the big picture. I look at the daily and I want to draw my levels. And I do this for every single stock. The first levels I see that are obvious are on 4.6, had a high of 3.98, and then just not too long ago, a couple of days ago, had a high of 4.50. So those levels are important to me. I'm gonna draw those out, and then I'm gonna put the low as well, just because, I mean, that level is completely obvious. And then we have a level right here where it couldn't get above. So I'll draw my levels out on the big picture, and then I'll zoom in. And once I zoom in, I am going to adjust some of these levels and put them where they are more important. Like this level is more important right here because we had resistance that became support, came support, and then broke through and then became resistance. So that's very important. So I do make adjustments after I draw on the big picture as I zoom in because I really want to see what is price action telling me. Now, the next thing that pops out to me is you'll see that we had lower highs every time we popped, right? That is important to me. And if you look at these lower highs, you'll start to see that there's a nice trend line forming right here. That trend line indicates to me that we found support from the prior days, these two past two days, and then we're breaking to the upside. So initially I'm thinking I may go long here. I'm gonna look for a long. This is after a three day weekend. We had a long weekend and because of that, I had FOMO this morning. So I didn't see this trade with the best set of eyes. And I'm going to explain how that comes into play here in a minute and what I learned from this trade. At first, I do like that this is setting up potential long. However, pre-market, I noticed pre-market that we are popping in the 340s and failing. So that right there is a red flag to me on maybe I shouldn't be going long here because this level is proven to be resistance. But at this time I had FOMO. I didn't see much of an opportunity anywhere else except here. So I was willing to take the shot, which is breaking their rule. Like I don't want conflicting signs. This is conflicting. What made me confident though, was I actually had this level drawn as well. If we zoom in, you'll see that. I want to take this time to say thank you to our sponsor, Cobra Trading. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing customer service. I've experienced many different brokers and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. This prior day we had resistance and it resisted on pre-market and after hours and then we broke above it. So at the open, when we came down to this level, this is a five minute chart by the way, when we came down to this level and wicked, that was interesting to me. And that made me think, coupled with my emotion of FOMO, right? This is, this is why it's so important like to understand where you're coming from. I found a reason to trade. And on the next five minute bar, when we wicked, I got in on this dip here at 317, thinking we're going to come back up to the highs, break and go. Two things wrong there. Number one, I can't assume that's going to break this level. I just can't do that. Assuming that means that I know what's gonna happen next, which means I'm calculating my risk reward based off that anticipation, which is terrible for me to do. Now the risk reward, although it was, it was okay, you know, even if I got out right here, it's three to one, but I can't assume that it's gonna reach and break this area because I was really hoping that it'd break and go higher, which would give me a four, five, six to one. 
And the reason I need that is because I'm not perfect at executing. And I'm not going to always be able to execute right on the T, three to one, two to one, five to one. So I need that room to make mistakes and they actually take home two to one, three to one, if there's a bigger move available. That's important to note because a lot of traders just look for like a two to one and be like, oh, there's two to one, but it's barely two to one. And then they end up losing because not every stock is perfect. It's not going to get there perfectly. You're not going to execute it perfectly. It's really hard to do. Being perfect is very hard to do when it comes to trading. So when this stock actually pops up for a minute, when it popped up, I thought I was going to be right. And so it looked good. And I actually have my screen recorded where I show you what I was thinking, how I was feeling live during the trade. But let me show you the executions here. You'll see I ended up taking a loss here. We I bought here at 317 and then it popped, failed, and I got out for a loss. And just typically, you know, it happens. And I cut it right below this level, but I had slippage. So you always want to account for slippage. Like even though I had a stop at 309, I knew slippage is possible. So I'm gonna size for maybe 305, three three dollars. So that way I don't take major slippage and have a bigger loss than I anticipated. I always want to be in control of one thing, and that's the only thing I can really control, and that's my losses. And so therefore, I'm gonna make sure that I account slippage in mind before I take the trade. So this trade didn't work, and that happens. I was a little frustrated. And as soon as I took the trade, I could feel that maybe I should just take this off because, you know, there is conflicting signs. I have resistance. I have a downtrend forming. You see this downtrend line forming. I have so many indications that it could be a long, it could be a short, it could be either way. And to be honest, this is more of a short case, right? Because we have more signs showing in the intraday that this is a short, but I had the FOMO glasses on and I was looking for a trade. That is my number one mistake today, looking for a trade. Now, luckily, a trade came to me right after this one, and that was BKSY, and this trade actually was a nice winner, and it made up for my previous loss. Now, first off, I'm going to go to the daily, which I always do, and I want to draw my levels. These are key areas of interest to me. I like to use Wix. Some people don't, but for me, it works. So at first I draw these levels on the daily, then I zoom in and I want to see what else is important to me. Like this is an important level as well, this area right here of interest, because you see it has support, breaks down, acts as resistance, breaks down, pops, acts as resistance. So this is a key area of interest. That's what I'm looking for. So when it's popping up from two straight up to this area, I'm interested in a potential short here. However, you can see that this also had a nice downtrend line that formed that broke to the upside. However, I'm not letting myself get emotional and just think this is a long right away. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why this is not. Big picture, this stock has tons of bag holders. Look at all this volume right here and just a lot of clutter of people being stuck at these levels. So when it pops up to here, I'm thinking they're going to want to sell for break even and get out for at least a small loss or possibly break even trade. So knowing that these traders who've bought it a while back are now on the backside of the move, when they see a pop, they may want to get in and cut their loss. And so these levels of supply are of interest to me. Now, it doesn't mean I'm just going to short right away. I want to see what's going to happen. So let's zoom in and let me show you how I played this. If we zoom in here, now that you know the big picture, pre-market, we're spiking. And we have decent volume pre-market. And not only we're spiking, I want to find out where are the key levels here during the pre-market action. And immediately I'm going to draw this level here and this level. Because you can see before the open for a good hour and a half, we consolidated between these two levels. This is a 280 level. Let's make this a straight line. And this is a 260 level. And this is a 260 level. So at the open, what I'm thinking about is, okay, big picture, I'm thinking short, but this is strong. It has a lot of volume and it could squeeze and we have other levels above it. You see these levels? So it could go to those levels before it fails. So I don't just want to assume that it's a short, I need a short right now because that could be a recipe for disaster. And I know that FOMO made me lose my last trade. So I want to make sure I'm careful and I take this trade with a good plan, a good risk reward, and the trade is coming to me 
which happens here. If we zoom into the one minute, you'll see the market opens here at 9.30, right? At the open, we pop up breaking above resistance. And here's what happens next that's very interesting. Once we break above it, we have a nice, strong candle with huge volume, the biggest volume today so far with 2 million shares traded on a one minute candle with the tank. This is a beautiful sign to me. This is what I call a death candle. This is something that shows me that the move is done. We try to break out and if there were people who were short, who were using the stop at this level, they are getting squeezed, which we had. And if there's people of interest trying to buy here, they're buying, which they did, and they couldn't push the stock higher. Because they couldn't push the stock higher, because we had tons of volume following through on the downside, that means there's a lot of people selling because they didn't get their breakout. And because of that, they're freaking out. And that gave me an indication that we finally picked a side. Let's go to the five minute. On the five minute, it looks even better. It's just a wick, which is beautiful. That shows there's a tons of supply right here. Not only do we have the big picture on our side at three and 3.30, as I drew on the big picture earlier, but even on the pre-market, we couldn't break above that level. So we're respecting these levels. We're saying this is a short. So what did I do? I immediately take a short at 265 because I saw it tanking. And I'm risking at first 290 because I don't know. I don't know. It's kind of a chase and I want to be careful. And I'm not just looking to make money right away. I'm thinking this could bounce because this has a lot of volume. It has the possibility of squeezing and popping back to the 280s where I can get more of my shares and have a better average. So I took a quarter of my position and then right when we start to consolidate here, I'm starting to accumulate. And the reason I'm accumulating is because I'm thinking this. If you look on the five minute, all of these wicks here, I'm thinking the 275 area is important. We also have on the daily, the 270 level, which I've drew on the daily, that's important. So I'm thinking it can't really break above 280. If we break above 280, after showing me this pattern of breaking up, failing, then breaking back above, that would be to me, it's a long. But because of that, I'm gonna use that as my risk. So I start sizing in risking 280 to full size. And then once we have a little bit more price action involved and we start to break down again and hold right here on this candle, when we start to push up and hold, I size in even more risking above 274. The reason I do this is because now I have a beautiful risk reward, three to one minimum. If it goes back down to 230s or two where it came from, it's even more than three to one. And so therefore I have a good setup a good plan and I let the trade play out. And so here is what the trade ended up doing. I'll show you here, BKSY. Ended up taking my full size, as I mentioned, and covered everything here. I wish I would have held for my main price target of 236, but I did not, I'm not perfect. But this ended up making up for the previous trade. And the reason why I wanted to cover at 236 is my main goal is because this is the previous low before it really ran. And look, as you can see, it's still holding all day today. So let me show you these clips of the live trade itself so you can hear my thoughts while I'm in the trade. And that way you can see the difference in hindsight and while I'm there. So I ended up cutting ADN, ended up not working. It looked like it was gonna bounce and then it just fell. So I'm out of that stock and that's trading. And now I am sure BKSY full size um, and today's going to be, you know, a negative two hour day because I'm wrong on both or this is going to work out and make up for the last trade. So I have a first cover at 46 for half my shares, which is two to one. And then at that point, I'm going to hold the rest for three to one, which is 36. So we'll see if we can get that and find out. But I think it's looking good that we're going to have a fade big picture. The reason I'm sure is big picture. There's tons of resistance over here in the threes. And when we zoom in, you can see that it topped out at resistance at 280 and the three mark and then started to fail. And if you zoom in even further, we consolidate it, try to rip for the longs, but then had a long, had a nice wick that scared them out. And then we consolidate it below 275, which is my risk. And I went full size risking 275. So at this point, if it breaks above here, I wouldn't like this pattern anymore because it would be, you know, broken. It wouldn't be following trend and it would be very confusing. 
which, you know, confusing for the longs and the shorts. And at that point, I'd be done with it. But it seems like it picked a side, and now we should get a fade. So 230s could be reasonable, but I'm going to cover all of it at 236. So we'll see. So there you have it. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure you hit that like, subscribe, and share the show with another trader.